Hello, this is Louise Vanell coming to you from Fabulous Females at MMTV in the world. My guest today is Cassandra Vargas, who is a fascinating person from what I can gather so far. And she's going to talk to you about her ventriloquism and how she got into it, what she does, all kinds of interesting facts. So... Here is Cassandra to tell you about herself. Thank you so much for the fabulous introduction. And first, before we go on, I just want to say thank you so much for inviting me here on this podcast. Like what an honor it is to be among the many fabulous females that you have interviewed in the past. <laughs> and you like thought of me. Oh, my gosh. Like I am so honored and <laughs> so thrilled to be here beyond all measure. I love doing this. So thank oh, you for good. having me. Oh, good. That's <laughs> so great. Yeah, you're you're unique to you know we've done civic people and all but you know you're real a real entertainer thank you so much <laughs> yes yes yeah and so tell us what you do yeah so actually i'm a professional ventriloquist uh -huh. and um i started first doing it all the way in california and oh. then um you know, someone told me, they're like, hey, you know, you're really good at what you do. You could really make a living off of this. And I was like, I like that idea. I'm going <laughs> to go with that idea. Whoa, good. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I got like um, a professional like a professional coach to help walk me through, get my oh. business started. Uh -huh. And then I was like, I want to take it to the next level because I don't want to just be like a local ventriloquist that does puppet shows for libraries and stuff. I want to go more than that. Uh -huh. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and get my master's in children's media and try oh. to make a television show. Oh, wow. Yeah. So did you go to Emerson? Uh, actually, I went to Tufts University. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, it, was, it was so fun how to get there because when I first was looking into places, I was asking people that were in the media industry, what do you recommend? And they mm -hmm. were like, Tufts University for children's media is oh. one of the top ones along with like one in New York. And I was like, oh. Tufts University then. And that was the only one I did. And I was like, if I don't get in, that's just a sign to just be like a local ventriloquist. And Ooh -hoo. yeah, but now I'm here. So uh -huh. <laughs> oh, I'm enjoying that's it. Great. <laughs> yeah. So how many years of school was it? Um, well, I'm now in my second year for Tufts University. I'm a graduate student. So this is my okay. last year I'm going to be here. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. And, and you're leaving here? You know, I don't know. And it drives my family crazy because like, I didn't come back home. I'm like, I don't know. It just depends on, you know, where's the next step for me? I can only plan so much, you know. And then, oh, sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, things take over hold, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> and speaking of that, how did this whole thing come about at the very beginning? I mean, like little girls don't walk around saying I want to be a ventriloquist. Right. <laughs> right. You know, that is such a good question. I love answering this all the time. So, <laughs> so when I graduated from um, UC Davis, I got my degree in wildlife biology. Mm. I know. So science to mm -hmm. like completely creative. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Totally a switch there. Uh -huh. But um, I got into teaching children about wildlife. And oh. I was, yeah. And I was like the people that were in front, always teaching children about the wildlife and educating them. Uh -huh. And I was like, okay, I want to make this more exciting to children. Like, how do I make this more exciting to kids that they like it? They like gravitate towards it. What can I do? Uh -huh. So I thought back to my childhood. Um, I grew up in the 90s. So I watched a lot of Zabumafu. I watched a lot of Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Sherry Lewis. Oh, <laughs> you see the pattern. <laughs> yes, I do. They all had puppets. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to try this puppet thing out. And I watched a video of Sherry Lewis and I'm like, I've always liked ventriloquism. Mm -hmm. I've always something I gravitated to, especially with just how she did it. it was so amazing. I mean, like, I just love that character, Lamb Chop, so much. Like, she yes. was real to me, like uh, a real person. And I was, uh, uh. Yeah, I was like, I, I want to be like, a, that kind of um i want to get into that kind of field of making a puppet seem alive and connect with children this way where it just seems real and authentic uh -huh. and that's when i picked up my puppet and since then it's just taken off like it's opened up so many doors for me and i've met so many amazing people including you now because <laughs> of these you. puppets it's oh, amazing wow well, you said you picked up your puppet what is your puppet 
So uh, my first puppet I ever picked up, his name is Peanut, and he's like a really small um, little blue elephant, and uh, he's pretty much my inner child. So uh, he always comes out to play with the kiddos too, and the kids just connect with him on so many levels. Oh, yeah, I just yeah. reach back and then you know connect with them with my inner child. Uh-huh. It's it's just amazing. Amazing wow. connections. And how many characters do you have? Oh my gosh! So to be honest, I've lost count. Um, oh wow! <laughs> oh great! Yeah, um, I want to say like uh, so for my mostly like shows that I do, you know, for libraries, birthday parties, all like average on the on average like about five of them. Mm-hmm. And then one who I kind of love a lot is my my grandpa puppet. His name is Grandpa Paya. Uh-huh. And I make my own puppets. So oh. I I made my that puppet look exactly like my grandpa. Oh my god, how did you do it? <laughs> I just looked at a picture of my grandpa and then I just you know get a pattern and i was like okay this is my grandpa's nose my grandpa's like he just he like just he wears the same outfit as my grandpa does and uh-huh. i made him look exactly like my grandpa and <laughs> oh wow and then i tell my grandpa like you know you're with me at every show you know that oh, right <laughs> oh. and the kids love him <laughs> oh that's so sweet <laughs> yeah yes. they all want to uh-huh. see him and hug him afterwards it's oh. amazing uh-huh. yeah. oh yeah so you did it with material I'm sorry? You did your puppets with material. Yes, yes. So I use like, um, I use foam to create it or I use um, like, it's funny. Like I sometimes um, look into what cosplayers make for their costumes and then mm. emulate them to my puppets as well. Mm-hmm. Um, like sometimes I'll use like some molding, molding clay or oh. like um, sometimes I'll use like specific foam for doing specific things to their bodies. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's just, and then I like, I'll look at YouTube videos too on like different ways of using materials to make it look a certain way. So uh-huh. thank goodness for YouTube because I, that was my oh, teacher oh. in making these. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. So you said you have multiple characters. Yes. Um, can you describe some of them? Yes. So I have like a Southern Belle. Her name is Madame Beverly, y'all. <laughs> and she's not Southern Belle. Oh. And she just loves to bake cookies and to give the warm hugs on a child. So that's that's Beverly. And uh. another one is Shelly, and that's a turtle. Uh. And she is just so like... Californian kind of girl. So she's like, what's up, dude? How's it going? Yeah, radical. <laughs> totally laid back, dude. Whoa. <laughs> um, let me see. And then another one I love a lot is um, Roger. He is my he is my little bunny rabbit that I make a um, real known to the kids. He is the worst music- magician in the world. Like, uh, uh, he does magic tricks, but they're uh, more to make children laugh because yeah, they're just yeah. terrible magic tricks. Uh, I- <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> but, oh my gosh, like, to me, he's like that fun, crazy uncle that, like, makes the weird jokes and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, sometimes when kids want a picture with him and they ask, they're like, Roger, can we take a picture of you? He's like, yeah, let me get my good backside out. And <laughs> he'll just show his butt to the kids and then they'll take a picture. <laughs> and they're like, what? <laughs> and they just crack up. Yeah, uh, he's, he's the crazy uncle that I just love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it sounds great. Oh, tell us a few more. Oh, yes, yes. So, um, my, oh, another girl I love so much. Her name is Mona and she is, um, like she speaks half Spanish and half, um, English. So she's like, hola boys and girls, buenos dias, hello. Um, and she's so great cause she just is totally, um, so all my puppets like are an emulate of myself in some way and uh-huh. just expanded like to the max. Sure. So with, with her, she is so into love and being a princess and finding love and finding her prince one day that will sweep her <laughs> off her feet off of her castle. And that's like her whole thing. And it's just, uh, it's so cute. Like, um, so 
um, going back to my grandpa, grandpa puppet, which I do a lot, it's kind yeah. of great because she's just like, oh, love is so amazing. Love is so romantic. And my grandpa Paya is like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. love. And it's just so fun to see that duality play out because they uh, feed so well off each other and like the uh, positive optimist to love. And he's just like, Grr. <laughs> but eventually grandpa Paya always finds love at the end after uh, singing a song in the puppet shows. So. <laughs> oh, cute. Oh, it sounds adorable. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I love it. Like um the new one we've been playing is for Mona to sing is um uh, uh Britney Spears' song and Grandpa Paya sings along and uh, it's just it's just so much fun. Oh. Um so then there's that and then I want to say I'm trying to think of who else I have. Oh, I have Doggo and he is oh my gosh. So I I just love this one because this one um I created him and mm -hmm. when I made him, I was usually my puppets. I'm like, okay, I make this puppet. And as I'm making it, I'm like, what kind of personality do you have? How, what am I feeling from you? Like, how are you talking to me right now? What am I pulling from like when I'm, when I'm making you mm -hmm. that these characteristics pop out with mm -hmm. him, his characteristics didn't pop out. And so for a while he was just sitting there and mm -hmm. he's just such a beautiful puppet. And I was like, I don't know what to do with you. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. at some point I was like, well, maybe I should just sell him or something. Uh -huh. And at that time, I also had a little sister from the Big Brothers Big Sisters program. She picked up the dog, gave him a personality. Oh. Yeah. And from then on, I was like, I know that dog's personality now. Uh -huh. And it took me to have her as little sister to then teach me who he was ah. and what a gift it is to then bring her with me here because she's in, in California uh. um but like what a gift it is that she gave me that like a she gave me that character to just go off of and keep doing it and he's like pretty much like a goofy guy like this you know <laughs> and he's like a typical dog loves scratches on the head <laughs> oh <laughs> but like um he's just a very very loyal. What I like about him the most is sometimes I feel like he's a lot like me in the sense that's like, I don't know what we're doing, but we're going to have fun doing it anyway. Oh. And I'm here, so let's just do it. <laughs> that's him in a nutshell, and it's just uh, perfect personality. <laughs> okay. So I'm not quite sure, but so you, you don't like have a storyline um, so much as kind of just going with... What you feel? That's a good question. So I um as in like as in puppet shows, right? Like when I mm -hmm. do puppet shows. Oh, so yes, I usually do have like a storyline of what happens, but um I don't know. Like for the most part, it's like being a ventriloquist. It's a little bit different than doing a regular puppet show because uh. it's just you and a puppet in front of each the audience talking. You can't really go behind something and like hide or do something else. It's like you, uh. a puppet, and the audience. Mm -hmm. So usually it's like little small like small stories for each puppet you know okay. so like usually i have like the first one come out which is doggo he warms up the crowd and he gets them all excited mm -hmm. and then i have like a story with just mona and grandpa Paya and grandpa Paya is finding love mm -hmm. um and then i just do like a magic trick and then um but like it goes in the way of a sequence that like we do have a story mm -hmm. in a sense but they have small little tidbits of stories because you know, I feel like nowadays with, with children, they get kind of the wiggles more, you know, <laughs> frequently, like 15 minutes and they're like, we need to move. Yes. So usually we'll do a magic trick or like some kind of ventriloquist, uh. like specialty thing to keep them like, um, you know, entertained. But mm. for the most part, we go by a theme. Like usually libraries tell us, hey, we want to use a theme here. And what do you have? So we'll follow that theme and make a story all around that using puppets. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that sounds like fun. It yeah. is. It, it, it makes you really think outside of the box, too. Uh -huh. And it kind of like pushes you to say, okay, well, I don't think I've ever thought of doing a space program, but because the libraries are doing space, we're going to do space. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Great. So yeah. It, it makes you think. And then, like, what's really fun is that you get to play with props and you get to make props for the puppets and the puppets get to okay. make costumes. And, yeah. uh, it, ah. it just gets so fun. And then I get to wear a costume too, which mm -hmm. I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm there for like <laughs> yeah. dressing up in so costumes. So does your costume change? I mean, like, do you have a different costume for different times? Yes, or, yes, yeah. I do. So it's not a set personality. 
that you right yeah yeah okay. I, I think i think that's so fun because it brings more of the magic to the theme because i'm just there as a person mm -hmm. and you know the puppets are their own characters it's like well i should be a character too because the puppets are because i'm or that i'm just standing there <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. so you know i thought i'd like go into it so i have like a, a pirate that i go into I, i'm a mermaid sometimes oh yeah uh -huh. and then I, you know i make my own costumes or i buy them um but yeah, the mermaid one I made and I'm really proud of. But um, yeah, it's just, it's been so much fun. I, uh -huh. I just love being a character along with these characters. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So is it different all the time then? Or do you sometimes repeat a show? Um, usually we repeat, well, because I've been so busy with my master's program, usually mm. I've been like having to repeat shows, but sometimes I'll be like, I'll do the same show. But I'll like say, okay, I kind of want to try this new material. I'm uh -huh. kind of like bored of this joke. Let's put a new joke in, see how that goes. Uh -huh. And then I'll do it and I'll say, okay, the kids react to it the way I wanted them to. Mm -hmm. And if not, how do I make that funny? Uh -huh. Or how would I change it for next time? And uh -huh. then pretty much I just keep changing that joke and changing it until it works. And then I'm like, okay, we'll do that for a while. And mm -hmm. then a few, you know, like another shows later, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of getting bored of this thing. So mm -hmm. let's change it out. So slowly I start changing out like each part of the jokes or a storyline because you know, like after doing it so long, you get kind of tired of it. I <laughs> would think, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so you're like, I want to make it new and fresh. And it's kind of nice to try out new material and see if it works and it doesn't on an audience and then just tweaking it until you find the right, you know, okay, this is this is how it works. This is what they see. They get it this time. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's try it again. Does it work? Did they get this time? Yes, they uh -huh. did. Okay. Now we're getting the ball rolling, mm -hmm. you know, so it's a constant like, oh, well, we'll keep making jokes as we go along. And the show has now evolved into something different. Like um, when my dad came here mm -hmm. um, a few months ago, I was so excited to show him my show now because it's like dad from the beginning. I, uh. when I first started out, I, you know, I, I didn't know what I was doing really, <laughs> Sure. you know, I was, I was doing so many things and now I feel like I've now evolved over time with my shows to where I have it more cemented and it's funnier and the characters are able to interact more with the children and uh -huh. oh, it's great. just, yeah, it's just a totally different way I've been performing ever since like just last year. Oh, So it's so exciting whenever like he sees my shows. Cause I'm like, yes, I've changed from last time you saw me and it's such ah, a good feeling. Ah, oh, oh, you know? that sounds great. Yeah. yeah. It's always so good. it's, it's, if it's scripted, it's loosely, very yeah, loosely. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Cause I feel like, um, you know, when you, when you're going script, like a scripted it's not as authentic and like sometimes like kids yell out something and they uh -huh. could throw you off and if you have it memorized you're like oh where was i where was i oh my gosh i can't remember but when you have it like loosely scripted you're like okay i know where i need to go next yeah. but because like this kid is either you know saying something silly or uh -huh. wants to interact with the puppet uh -huh. or something like that let's let's do that let's play with that a little bit you know uh -huh. and then we'll get back to where we need to get back to we'll we'll do it and yeah. if we go over are the libraries really going to complain? Oh, you know, you entertain the kids for too long. <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to complain about that. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, it sounds great. I'd love to see a show Oh, sometime. yes, please yeah. do. Let me know where you are sometime. Yes, that, yes. When you're fairly near. <laughs> yeah. So we're, well, so we're under, um, so if I will give you that separately, we're still trying okay. to like, you know, we're actually trying to make new shows coming out. Uh -huh. And by we, I mean me and the puppets. We, okay. <laughs> we we try to make new shows for every year. So we're on a new way to make a new type of show for what we're doing next. And uh -huh. we're under Peanuts Playhouse. Uh -huh. If you guys want to search it up there. But yes, I will tell Peanuts you the dates. Playhouse. Yeah, Peanuts okay. Playhouse. Okay. Yeah. Okay, for all you people out there, did I give you enough time to get a pencil and paper? <laughs> <laughs> Peanuts Playhouse. Yep, that's right. Okay, <laughs> continue. <laughs> yeah, so um, I mean, it's been it's been such a journey to be here, and then you know now that like I'm also going my master's, I'm doing something here, and that's how I met you was with the Melrose Public Television Station. Uh huh. So right. um, what I'm doing now is I'm basically trying to learn about how children learn social and emotional skills. Oh. Through television, meaning uh -huh. how can children learn how to regulate their emotions, how to, you know, like learn the things that are, you know, like things that are coming in our society. Like, you know, it's important to tell the truth. It's important to tell people you feel, 
you know, just because you do like one thing bad doesn't make you a bad person. It's just, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes we have these feelings that make us do bad things, but we're not really a bad person. Mm-hmm. So that's my next thing too, mm-hmm. while I'm doing here. Oh, and it's like an, the big project that I'm hoping uh-huh. to get done here and then test it on children, like not test, like, but show it to children and see if they understand what is being you know shown on the television and mm-hmm. if they actually can apply it mm-hmm. so that's the whole thing i'm doing here with tufts university and with my puppets is ah. the next step is making a television show here aha uh-huh. mm-hmm. sounds great so right now if people are out there listening and they think oh i'd love to take my kids to see her What's their next step? Okay, so um, to see me on my puppet show stuff, you can go to my um, website, peanutsplayhouse.org. Um, I have a whole thing there. Um, we're also under Facebook and mm-hmm. Instagram. And um, for for the, the Malvaro's Public Station, mm-hmm. I'm hoping to air that soon. Uh-huh. Um, but it is, um, just to be warned, like with this one, it is more Christian based. So oh, okay. it's like, it's, it has, it has a Jesus and, um, mm-hmm. it just tells you kind of like, it's not too like Bible thumpery. Cause mm. I just, I, I personally like kind of gravitate away from those. If it's too Bible thumpy, I just like mm. soft and nice loving messages and that's what ah. i like to do yes oh it sounds fantastic thank you so much oh i've learned so much tonight i'm thank really you. eager for more <laughs> of it hear more about it and and how you're doing and everything yes. for all of you out there you now know how to get in touch with her if you need to and uh, do you want to repeat that quickly yes briefly so it's under peanutsplayhouse.org if you ever want to book me for any shows uh You know, I do birthday parties and libraries and special events like that, too. And, yeah, I just can't wait to hear from you, fantastic viewers, listeners. And thank you so much for listening to my story. And thank you, Luis, (laughs) for taking the time to interview me. And it was so much fun today. (laughs) Oh, thank you. I've really enjoyed it. (laughs) And for all of you out there, I hope that you also enjoyed this and will continue to enjoy it. And this is Louise Fennell coming to you from MMTV. I hope you all have a fabulous evening.